Hello everyone. Good afternoon. I am Bindu Pillai on on behalf of Read Exhibitions Mapic India. I would like to welcome you all for today's session. Thank you for taking the time out and being here today with us. Today's webinar is revamping retail landscapes into innovations and evolution in the covid era. These are trying times for all business and especially tough on those in the retail sector. But for survival business must go on retailers need to catch up with the latest technologies to provide their customers with better experience and also increase their own efficiency and profitability in the new normal so let's hear from the industry experts what they have to offer to our retailers i feel honored to introduce our moderator mr sandeep jabal vice president it at jubilant footworks limited our speakers in the order of the presentations mr david mathai managing director ibitec group india and middle east presenter two is bhaskar murthy vice president sales at posiflex india limited presenter three is abhinav pal ceo at corpu uh, presenter four is uh, josefa merchant founder of insync shop fittings just a little housekeeping before we get started the recorded version of the webinar will be available on demand so not taking much of your time over to you sandeep thanks bindu and a big thanks to mapic india irf for having me on this webinar to moderate this uh good afternoon everyone and a very warm welcome to all the delegates and special thanks to all the panelists for being able to take time out for this knowledge sharing session I'm Sandeep Jabal, Vice President IT, working with Jubilant Foodworks, a name that needs no introduction though. Uh, it's a master franchisee for Domino's and Dunkin' Donuts for India and South Asia, and it has two brands of its own: Hong's Kitchen, which is a Chinese cuisine, and Biryani's of India, which is biryani's, kebabs, and curries. I've been into retail domain for 18 plus years now, and prior to Jubilant Foodworks, I was associated with Marks and Spencer Reliance India as head of IT. and apart from that i've worked for global mnc clients in us us uh, europe and india geography now i started uh, you know i called this a knowledge sharing session and not a webinar because to me covid 19 is what we call a black swan event a very unprecedented in terms of its timing its consequences so we'll all are learning from each other and and, learn and helping each other to get over it by you know coming together as partners uh in terms of technology partners in terms of industry partners or in terms of sharing of information in sessions like this and in some cases cases we have seen the sharing of assets also started some examples of real estate uh, sharings are already in the news where a couple of brands have come together and shared some spaces like bindu said uh, you know these are testing times for all of us and and uh, you know nobody has gone through this kind of an event so we all are learning and the stores of future you know may not In be the stores that we see today. Um, for example, I believe the trial rooms that we, you know, have been using to buy our clothes may give away to virtual kind of a dressing mirror, and lots of new technologies will come, uh, you know, to to take us through this this testing times. So it's a great time for retailers to, you know, take a relook at the entire system, entire ecosystem, redesign their offerings, redesign their channels. and adopt the latest technology to provide our customers with a better or best experience to increase their efficiency and profitability as well and you know as always the first movers to grasp new technologies or do digital transformations will have advantages and uh, <clears throat> with this i would like to you know uh, give a brief about how we're going to have our session flow today we have four panelists who will be giving their presentations followed by a short q and a session after each presentation and then we'll have a open panel discussion for about 15 minutes followed by any other question and answers you can put your q and a uh, you know questions in the window that you have in front of you uh with this i would like to invite our first panelist david mathai david is been into retail technology for 25 plus years in indian middle east region with extensive exposure to global retail environment he's created ibitech company with his colleagues a corporate office in dubai and india headquarters is at bangalore the core strength is focus on end to end item visibility and control saving substantial dollar through you know automation and loss prevention so 
I think the focus is a lot on the supply chain and end to end. I, I, I welcome you, David, and um, you know, uh, I've done most of the introduction, but I would like to tell you something that I've not made, something secret that you want to say about it. For me, it would be, you know, during these COVID times, I've been able to save a lot on my commute and hold my cooking skills. My family is quite happy with this. Over to you, David. Thank you, Santeep. Thank you for, uh, for those nice words. And uh, Reed team, thank you for having me uh, to be one of the panelists uh, this evening. And uh, whatever I have to say for about myself, Sandeep has given and he wants some kind of a secret. I mean, I couldn't agree. <laughs> I couldn't agree more with you that I am grounded at home. So the, the home flocks are seeing me more than they used to. So that's a good thing. And uh, I've been able to a little bit of, uh, do a little bit of outside gardening and seeing the grandchildren and whatever it is. So that's a good thing happened. So thanks to uh, COVID, in addition to exposing us to these new technologies that we can possibly come together online and see and say hello. Said that, let me move on to <clears throat> uh, what I wanted to uh, share with uh, my audience this afternoon. Uh, I have a small presentation here. Oh, my, okay. Can, can everybody see my screen? I guess you can. Yeah. All right, okay. So what we are doing is, uh, we are basically in the retail industry. Uh, been there for uh, quite a few years. And uh, in, the, in the tenure that we were in the industry, we have seen many many, many technologies come, many rise and fall of uh, retail empires and people and whatever it is. So experience taught us a lot. And what we are focusing on, as uh, Sandeep very correctly said, we do the end-to-end -end automation of the inventory movement. So it is, we call it as a, a source to checkout. Now, Oh, yeah, okay. We are in uh, the Middle East pretty much all over, and we have uh, executed projects in uh, more than these places beyond up to Egypt. And in India, yes, we are in key places. Uh, we are there for the last 10 years, working with uh, some of the most reputed names in the retail. We have, uh, this is something that I wanted to brag a little about. Our pride is our staff. The good thing about our staff is including my partners in the business, uh, which I call partners in crime. Uh, they all have the same experience like that I have, maybe over two decades plus. And uh, ex but for the few new staff that we have in India, they came on board last year. The rest of them uh, were with us at least for 15, uh, 10 to 15 years. So there is a lot in uh, knowledge-wise, experience-wise that we can offer. So what we do, <clears throat> one of our prime strength is that we understand the retail industry. And we understand the retailers' pain points. We understand where they lose money and where they can save money. And for that, from our experience, we found the option is to go for end-to-end -end automation making sure that the inventory is visible all through the process, right from the source, from the very factory where it is shipped and to the stores it is being checked out. So if you just simply monitor your inventory movement, as it comes into your DZ, you have the shipping validation, the inventory count, and these are the places that you really take weeks sometimes depending upon the number of containers that which are coming in. And with the technology, you could possibly do this thing in 10 minutes. And then we have the shipping or probably the moving of the inventory to the DZ or maybe the central DZ or wherever it is. There also the shipping validation is important, in and out is important, inventory count is important. And also in the transportation, shipment, shipment validation, in and out 100% accurate. Then you go to the store level, you see what are the things that you want to see. 
you have to see the POS detachers, you can see the smart fitting rooms, you can see the self checkout, you can see the inventory count, real time replenishment, item search, shipping validation, and so on and so forth. So apparently you see an item that you are receiving, right? Or maybe that is just being shipped from the uh, factory or the source in some part of the country or maybe overseas. From that point to the checkout, you are simply uh, seeing your inventory item and you're following every movement and whatever it is happening. And basically you're monitoring, it is managed and you have management uh, tools, you have mobile apps for that. And the best part is you have a ton of analytical information on which that you take your decisions. Okay, let me just move on. I can keep talking on these things for till the cows come home, but then, uh, you know, we have uh, time problems. Okay, seamlessly, we will integrate everything through RFID technology. So what will happen is from the factory all the way to the multiple manufacturer, multiple DC points, multiple consolidation points, and all hundreds of stores across the globe, everything can be connected together and every inventory, every item can be monitored. So which will reduce huge, huge cost and uh, also make sure that your system, sorry, your business runs profitably. Now, moving on to this, I just wanted to break it down a little bit how it happens. We just make, break this thing into three. We say we do the backend support, we do the front end, and we do the technical support. In the backend, the source to the store, everything is simply monitored and regulated. And then it moves to the front end store, from your back office of the store to the checkout that item has got full visibility. And both these operations will be very efficiently supported technically by qualified engineers, experienced, and they are locally placed and uh, <clears throat> very strategically placed. And we work with most of the uh, international cloud, uh, cloud customers as well as uh, uh, local clients. Now the backend, what we do again, the source to store, every is, uh, it is uh, the backend and also the technical support is something that we always uh, talk uh, to our clients. And as a matter of fact, in India, we do not have marketing team or, or sales team or anything of that kind, but we have a very, very strong technical team. We don't get into any operation unless we can give technical support and education to our clients. So in the back office, what you will see is you will see the SKU based end to end control and visibility. What happens sometimes so when you get this visible, sorry, the, the inventory into your DC, uh, after completing the whole receiving uh, processes, by the time it hits the, 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 the store in different parts of the country, it can take weeks and I have seen it with my own eyes. And uh, on the other hand, and it's all required because different levels of validation processes and all those things have to be done. But unfortunately, today we have fantastic technology available that all these duplications can be avoided and everything can be seamlessly integrated. And none of even a single item of your merchandise will go out of sight. So this one, I don't want to hold this one, but this, this, is, this is a process chart that I have photographed from a client's place. And I know somebody should be definitely watching and I, I will be answerable to them. They're all good friends. But I was counting the, the, the actions or maybe the process point that they have in the warehouse is over 30, close to 40 processes in the store before an item is dispatched. So it is received, it is checked, it is uh, you know unpacked, it is it is labeled, it is security tag labeled. Oh, sorry, tag security tagged, repacked, then order process, then dispatched to different uh, stores. By all the time that you're having this material in your warehouse simply cash converted into material sitting on the store. Whereas 
with an efficient system like what we offer, you can have 10,000 items coming in to the, to the DZ and you can, you can possibly validate them for the count and also for the match of the inventory, whatever, whatever KPIs that you have, you will achieve that in possibly 10 minutes time. And then all those internal processes of tagging them or maybe applying labels and all those things are all done at source. So you can simply avoid all those processes. You save so much of cost, space, and also labor. And most importantly, in my opinion, these items will be available in your store for sale so that you don't have to really, really just look at the inventory sitting at, this, with, at your rack and cry about it. So you, the more you know, the more definitely you sell. So what happens with each item? What we do is we give them each item, the what, the when, and the where, and why information in terms of visibility and anywhere, <clears throat> whatever it is. When I say what, it talks about the item, uh, the definitely dedicated item code. Only that particular item will have that code. When did you really see this item? It was seen on one particular day, wherever it is. Where did you see that? It is seen in one of the stores, maybe store number so and so, so and so. And when did you see that? Why did you see that? I saw it in the inventory count, or maybe I saw it under the shelf, or maybe I saw it at the reject area, or whatever it is. But look at the way that each item it is monitored and managed under the visibility uh, program now i if i yes i think i have a couple of minutes more i just want to run a quick video for you and see what it is today shoppers are loyal to their favorite brands but they are also more demanding than ever they want to buy what they want to buy not something else and they want it instantly not later so making sure all products are immediately available is crucial for the success of retailers these days. What I want for my customers when they get in the store is finding what they want and need right away. So if I can have a kind of a, just a machine that told me, Julie, this is how many suits you have downstairs in the storage, this is how many shirts you have, this is how many pants you have. And you're selling a lot of that size, you need more sizes. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Machine. <laughs> I will do that. Our mission is to make it easy for retailers to always have the right products available. That's why we developed ID Cloud, a user-friendly software platform that raises stock accuracy, optimizes replenishment, and boosts product availability. With ID Cloud, RFID is both scalable and simple to use for everyone, from your IT team to your store staff. When I was introduced to the RFID, the first thing I said at the meeting was, yay, this is Christmas. I think that was exactly my words, because they showed us uh, the box and then just the scanner over it, and then it had counted everything in the box. I smile when I do inventory now. I never used to do that. There are many advantages to ID Cloud. It doesn't replace your existing ERP system, but instead feeds it with accurate data. You can use the RFID reader of your choice, and whichever mobile device and operating system you prefer. New staff members can be trained in a matter of minutes, and everybody can use ID Cloud in their own language. ID Cloud is built on GS1 standards like SG10 and EPCIS to enable easy integration with other technology providers and supply chain partners. The solution runs on state-of-the-art database technologies and easily scales to process data from thousands of stores, so you can make sure that your shelves are always perfectly stocked and you never miss a sale. Click, 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 done. Clean. What it does is your stock taking, stock availability and stock visibility. That you don't do the stock taking in every six months. You do your stock every day. So you don't have to close your store and every six months for one week for a stock taking and that too, it will be done in a hurry and invariably what will happen is you will have a negative adjustment every time. So what we are claiming at least in, uh, 
if it is not claiming at least it is it is a, it is the proven numbers here are our numbers we can definitely guarantee an increase an in store and online sales increase by 2 to 7% by implementing the system we can guarantee a 20 to 10 to 20% stock saving your stock planning because you get so many data in the in the whole thing then you have the most uh, one of the most difficult thing to really put your hands on internal shrinkage we can definitely make sure that internal shrinkage will come to a considerable uh, low if the system is implemented shipping doc uh, shipping validation and accuracy in every part of your shop uh, your inventory movement and definitely we can give you 90 nine percent stock accuracy in the shop as well as in the inventory places so this is these are some of the areas that we can help uh, the retailers uh, where the process time effort and labor is considerably reduced which is translated in terms of money okay and finally uh, when it comes to technical support what we offer we give proactive help the support you don't call us and say that you have a problem. Instead, our backend office uh, technical team will monitor your systems remotely. And if you have a problem, proactively they will call you or probably they will show up. And 90% of the cases, the remote troubleshooting will take care of everything. And also we have the remote technical diagnostic programs. That means when we are engineers when they come to an on-site job, if it is necessary at all, they don't have to come there and sit down and figure out in the store what exactly is the problem, but he knows where to hit straight. And he finishes the job in two minutes or half an hour, whatever it is, and he is out. And he is not an eyesore to the running business. Then comes uh, the firmware update. We keep updating the firmware and the software online without even you know it and the device management and whatever it is. Then in a total solution, what we employ, we employ hardware, solution platform, accessories, technical support, educating the clients and training. All these things put together, we work with very discerning, serious clients. Then with this, where are the challenges of the modern retailers? We have been infected with fragmented systems so many systems from various sources. So they all uh, have a very, difficult, a very limited functionalities and none of them is compatible to each other. So they are all non-compatible technology limitations and apparently they are not intelligent enough. But in today's post, I can tell you for sure, post COVID, the data is the retail's new currency according to sourcing journal. The data is the most valuable asset you will have because every single decision, every cost, every buy will be based on that. So for that, you need process innovations, you need advanced analytics, you need accurate item level data. So, and finally, apparently there are people who say that we can do it overnight. Of course, you can see how he's doing it and it will be cheaper as well. And what happens with the standalone units? We all are stuck with standalone units where they all come to a dead end and they're standing there. And finally, oh yeah, with that, okay, I have some more slides, but I just want to call it off because I, my time is thanks, up. Thanks, David. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank almost you. on the time. So uh, we have two questions. One is coming from the chat and one is coming from the q and box. I'll match those up because they're related. So this is, uh, you know, uh, about what is RFID the best and the most efficient way for tracking your articles. And another question is, what do you think about NFC technology, RFID versus NFC and its practical use slash cost in relation to fashion and assesses retail industry with multiple brands? Uh, David, if you allow me, I'll just give one more input from my side and then over to you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So a uh, couple of years ago, I was in headquarters of Marks and Spencer in London and, and we were trying to look and replicate you know, the RFID tag insertions in the garments for India business as well. And I went on to the leader who was heading the RFID program. It was a multi-year program. So I said, we want to replicate uh, this in India. He said, um, you know, as a first step, you take the CD and the CD was having a label 
RFID learnings. <laughs> so yeah. he said, you watch this and in your next trip, I'll give you, you know, the plan, multi-year plan for implementing RFID for India business. Okay. So uh, it's, it's, it's quite a journey, I would say. Over to you, David. You, you, you're laughing. You, you've been through that and journey, I would say. <laughs> Sandeep, Sandeep you, you simply spoke my heart out. <laughs> because RFID is the thing, the talk of the town in retail all over the world. But they, many of them have absolutely no clue what RFID is. Everybody is saying, I need RFID, I need RFID. Yes, but what do you want RFID for? See, there is no point in just having a little information and trying to build on that. But what we are saying is RFID will give you an end-to-end -end visibility of all your inventory from source to checkout. And it will replace all your current manual or troublesome expensive processes, which all, and also it will make sure that you have absolute loss prevention savings. And it tons and tons of them. Then, plus you have a lot of ancillary benefits, like you want to have incorporate a couple of, uh, uh, let us say, smart mirrors to it or maybe you know, in the dressing room, you want metal detectors to, uh, all, those, they, all those things are working on RFID. So when you make retail investment as the technology people, you have to make two decisions. One, don't look at us as a vendor. We don't do that. We want to be a technology partner to your business. You have to trust us. We have to learn from each other. You, we have to learn from you, your business, you have to learn from what us that what we can offer. One, two, you, you have to remember always RFID technology, what we are offering is very scalable. You cannot start end to end. That will never take place. You have to start either in the front or in the back. Then you have to work forward or backward. You can keep integrating and building blocks. And then finally one day, one nerve will run the whole thing properly and you will see you will land up in a, in a place that totally different world which was, was maybe for two years so this is what we suggest okay thanks david thank you okay so thanks david uh, that's all the time we had for you know question answers and quite an insightful uh, view into the end-to-end -end supply chain tracking and management and, and let me tell you the proactive support thing that you mentioned is quite innovative i'm sure uh, a lot of people will benefit from that thanks david thank you okay so next uh, i'm pleased to welcome bhaskar murthy uh, more than more than you know his introduction uh, he's a friend that i've known for 15 plus years and and i would say he's a a uh, senior, very senior person in the retail industry or knows who's and who of retail. By an introduction, he's an electrical and electronics engineering graduate who ventured out to form a startup in 1997. I don't know whether the startup term was there at that time or not, at a very young age, which resulted in formation of protocol solutions. Uh, then they became the distributor of Posiflex products and further protocol solution merged with Pos Posiflex Global to form Posiflex technology in India in 2010. He has a rich uh, retail experience of two, two decades and I know 15 years of that. And I've been, he's been working with most of the retail houses in India. And uh, he's been in the technology space to you know, experience the Fox Pro based retail solutions in DOS to the retail current technology platforms. Posiflex is now a leading POS hardware provider in India with a well established sales and service network. And a small disclaimer, uh, Posiflex is one of our key vendors in Jubilant Foodworks. Over to you, Bhaskar. And you have to start with a secret. Uh, I know all of them, but for others, you need to mention one of the best you want to mention. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, and thanks for the nice uh, introduction. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here and share the same uh, platform that uh, you are uh, boarding it. Uh, so uh, I'd like to share a simple uh, video Okay, so since I said there's a journey of two and a half uh, decade for us in the retail, and I know how the retail has worked in the past, and the technology, as I think David also will agree, and you will also agree when you start the retail career, we don't have such fast transformation of the technology. Anything that we need, we need to discuss for a year, then the things will happen after some time. Yes, uh, there will be a cost, there will be evaluation, DCO, like RFID. I've been discussing about RFID since I started my career. 
okay and it's not changed in the world how the rfid has to be transformed okay okay and we still debating it is rfid is the right solution right okay so that that's thanks to the technology something is evolved something is evolving okay i i like to share a small video then we move on to a simple presentation and some knowledge sharing kiosk so what possiblex has offered is started offering is a lot of kiosk solutions uh, point of sale is getting static at the fixer pause uh, wherever it is so we moved on to uh, invest our uh, energy and r and d time to uh, invent lot of uh, kiosk solutions so one such kiosk solution is for the food court there will be also piloting lot of rfid kiosk solutions in india so we already piloted a rfid kiosk which is already live in couple of uh, uh, big retail stores in india so this one is about the food court where uh, you you can have a complete uh, uh, end to end management of the food court so the food court of management is completely including the point of sale order taking to the cube stream to the kitchen display to the delivery of the product today what we also started implementing is the voice over on the kiosk solutions Okay. I think I will stop the video. Then we'll uh, continue into the discussion point. Yeah. So here we talk about the new normal in the retailing. So the retailing is all about. getting personalized connection and then you, you have a lot of options in your restaurant you have a lot of options in the retail where you like to have a personal connect so today uh, the post covid era what we are looking at is completely a new normal of uh, operations so one such thing is avoiding uh, menu card touch that is the ba basic main thing that we get into any restaurants we touch menu cards and that's that that's a scarcity today you you scared to touch anything that away from your home okay then try to have less contacts of the humans so that that ensures that your safety and we can't stay in the home forever so we have to venture out we have to go out we have to dine out we have to meet people and that that becomes essential that how how far we can enable and improve, improve and implement the contactless technologies so so today that is the new norm over here and avoid long and packed queues again whenever we go out to the restaurants or to the malls we have always a long queues which is Uh, which we always uh, uh, perplex to go near to the crowd even though in the normal time we have enough time to select the goods but we see the long queue we always get perplex but during this uh, uh, post pandemic time that that also becomes a big question mark how do we handle it and retail is becomes very uh, uh, important to implement a technology how to handle such uh, such kind of issues and still bring in a business next thing is you have a physical contact of handling a cash or a card today uh, in the past we all think that the cash cannot go out of india and thanks to demonetization a lot of things has changed wallet payment and things like that has come and plastic card becomes uh, very important and uh, uh, in, uh, i think sandeep will agree most of the sales which is happening on the store level will be a plastic card based today the plastic cards are getting replaced by wallets and other upi payments and that that's that's a cashless or a contactless payment something is which is evolving it and how fast we are adapting it to it is also very important and all these things is all ensuring the safety and social distancing is something which is very important and in the past there are a lot of discussions happen on how do we get into the digital uh, invoicing and there are a lot of resistance from the uh, consumers that I, i i i can't read it i have i have problem in reading i like to have the a physical invoice and there is a government insistence to give the physical invoice and today the government itself is relax some of the rules you can get into the e receipts to save cost a uh, green and things like that i think e initiatives on the e invoicing is such it's getting popular and i think it will be more prevalent Uh, as, as we as we go for shopping uh, when we go get out of the house similar way uh, in the retail as well as a lot of things in the digital transformation uh, which we spoke i think uh, sandeep will agree with me there a lot of uh, uh, panel discussion in the past lot of uh, even bindu if you see lot of uh, mapic or other uh, lead uh, exhibition organizers that's lot of even support the digital transformation of the retail industry and the journey of the customer across different media where they buy the products physical or a commerce or on the go how how a digital transformation will take place and some of those technologies that we try to implement post pandemic are in the process of uh, implementing today is all was viewed as a luxury in the past like 
digital transformation was a luxury in the past today the digital transformation is very very essential and bare minimum for the retailers to survive because of simple reason that you need to stay in business you need to have ensure safety and security not only to the consumers but also to your staff and your own self so that becomes a lot of things are slightly going out of window i don't know how far it will go out of window it will go out of window for a temporary period until we find a solution for pandemic but definitely it is necessary necessary that some of the personal touch uh, shopping experience within the store will slightly go out of window physical trial rooms becomes very potential for the uh, uh, disease spread so hence physical trial rooms becomes uh, for time being uh, non existence and additional multi planes we always get to lot of plenty of orders during the end of season sale that whenever end of season sales are there there are always the retailers rush to in, uh, use multiple lanes and that becomes a uh, question mark today because you don't want to crowd the people and again the physical receipts is one thing which uh, important in the past and the new strategy what i, I understand from many of my retail colleagues uh, are uh, thinking of implementing is there are a lot of in store and out store shopping fulfillment is something which becomes a necessity today you don't want to get into a uh, uh, even uh, pizza collection centers or into a fnb quarters or into a retail stores you like to collect the goods what you ordered so that you you try to avoid the crowd and you like to be have a zero contact i think dominus pizza is doing a great job in that i, I hats off to sandeep and team that zero contact is something that they introduced and that becomes a great success over there during the pandemic period i think many retailers will such 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 zero contact and contactless deliveries will start implementing that's why the outdoor shopping fulfillment which i mentioned virtual trial rooms become there are a lot of mirror solutions uh, uh, virtual trial rooms has been talked and that becomes a luxury in the past today the retailer will try and rush and implement such solution which becomes an essential today because you don't want to go to the physical trial rooms and uh, as i said e initiatives on the invoice even in the retail and next big thing what is already happening on this is the mobile based self service or a kiosk based self service checkout counter and today in the past if you if you want the consumers to self build those uh, products by having an app on their mobile phone they find that is a disturbance in their uh, billing process they like to have somebody assisted somebody do the job for them today uh, i think uh, uh, today or even we venture venture out to post uh, lockdown situation you like to build by yourself so you like to be let them be disciplined and self service checkout counters with the voice assisted that becomes a smart will become the norm of the technology which the retailer will implement as i said smart kiosk uh, mobile based digital catalogs will evolve endless aisle will evolve so this all becomes a fast track new strategies which retailer will start implementing it uh, some of the some of the tech solutions that is going around during this uh, pandemic period that has been discussed is uh, one, one such thing which we will all uh, extensively look at is the qr goes the qr code based uh, ordering system uh, in the past qr code was looked like a, a uh, image or a picture a picture which many people did not understand then the once the upi payment comes we all start learning what is qr code faster than the uh, actual barcodes then that becomes a norm for the upi payments and today the, the same qr code uh, technology will be extensively used for ordering solutions so possiflex also invested to uh, our sister, sister concern which developed the complete qr code uh, solution which digitally transform your menu into a online menu you actually don't need app so there's no app involved so there's no multiple app the customer needs to implement whether you go to a food court whether you go to an individual restaurant or on the go the qr code based solutions is all available on the mobile phone you get the menu on card you place your order suggestive selling fast moving items for a given uh, restaurant then what is in order what is not in order then you complete your payment through a wallet or through a online payment then the order is getting delivered whether you are within the store whether you are at home whether you are on the move or you are at office uh, the, the solution is going to uh, play a big role over here i think a lot of companies has ventured out to do this uh, qr code solutions which i think when we go to our restaurant we will get to see that next thing is what we have also developed is a kiosk solution and this is also very important we being a hardware manufacturer and when we when we talk about the solution to the retailers it becomes important that how do we bundle the complete hardware software and services together and and when, when we talk about the kiosk uh, kiosk becomes an important in the digital trend digital journey of a retailer so we, we felt uh, uh, the digital menu uh, the which interfaces with the back end system which is basically a, a point of sale system or inventory management solutions or a recipe management solutions or to a back end uh, uh, order processing machine which is important for us to have a seamless interface and have a 
and have a beautiful experience of using the kiosk. So the kiosk is not simply putting some certain um, uh, menu items onto the screen. It needs to have a complete uh, uh, science of consumer using this device and they need to have a, a, a happy journey of using the a screen, monitoring it and how fast they can check out using the screen because that we are busting the queue. So it becomes important for them to use the screen very conveniently. And we are, we are developing a, a proprietary and scalable uh, voice, voice activated model, which can be plugged into any of the kiosk or a point of sale device. So which means it, 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 it can interact with the customer with the contactless. So though you have a touch screen, you don't need to just touch screen. You will, you will, you will, it will voice prompt it. It has got a multi-language uh, support. It helps to interface with any third party point of sale application or a kiosk application very easily. So we are going to give all kinds of APIs and things like that, which, which will enable and anybody to go fast to implement the voice assisted ordering solutions, whether it's a kiosk, whether it's a point of sale, doesn't matter. Uh, voice assisted will be the norm in future and we're investing a lot on uh, this to uh, bring this as soon as possible. Uh, probably next month we'll have a trial run in India for the voice assisted and ordering kiosk. And QPOS is just a migration of uh, a digital menu into the physical point of sale building. So this all three will become uh, unique solutions for the retailer, whether you have a point of sale or you're in a kiosk or in a QR code, you'll have seamless, same experience for the retailer as well as the cashier. Uh, so as I explained- so, like, oh, Bhaskar, we, just out of time, so if you can wrap yeah, it. I, I'll wrap it fast, uh, Sandeep. Uh, so again, I explained how the QR code is going to work. You have a scan, place order, collect material, irrespective of where you are, how, you, uh, how the movement is. And all these things are seamlessly interfaced with the cloud and, and it, it, it's got a zero contact uh, solution. A kiosk, as I explained, the kiosk is uh, uh, voice automated and I, this is what has been uh, clearly explained in the previous slides. And these are some of the uh, holistic food ordering solutions that how we will operate. You will have the a QR code or a kiosk. It will have exactly the same replica of the images so that the customer will not figure out how do I order because they will have the same journey of the interface. And what we have also done is a complete API interface. It is easy to interface with any third party and you can just go within the day, live any of the retail shows that well, I like to go for a kiosk or a QR code based. A simple representation of the kiosk and we have different models. The kiosk is not, just not only for a food ordering thing. We, also, we, are, we have the kiosk for the complete uh, transaction or the uh, financial transactions as well as the retail. So as I said, we, in our lab in India, we also have a RFID kiosk, we have a, a self-checkout kiosk, we have a cubesting kiosk, we have a post on wheel kiosk, which uh, these have been implemented in many retail stores already. Uh, since uh, mid of last year, we have this kiosk journey happening and many retail houses start implementing this. I think when we when we venture out to retail, we will get to hang on hands off all these uh, solutions being practically used in uh, Indian environment. Though these are all uh, common uh, in uh, developed countries, I think uh, India will go fast towards these implementations. A little bit about Posiflex. Posiflex has been uh, globally for 35 years, uh, since 1984. Uh, 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 the last few years, Posiflex Global start investing in several companies, one such is Kiosk. Kiosk is based out of US. They are number one of the top three Kiosk manufacturers. Uh, as, as a part of our product portfolio enhancement, uh, we thought, uh, uh, self-service kiosk are, a, are a, a moving from a fixed cost to a contactless uh, solutions like a, a touch screen and voice operated kiosk is important. So we invest on the kiosk. Uh, and Portwell is another IoT and automation company which we acquired, which gives us the complete IoT paradigm of the solutions, point of sale, kiosk, automation, no matter whether it's an airport or a retail back office, we have the complete uh, uh, IoT solutions available. And next thing what we are done, invested is in a Quinta, which is a 100% uh, 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 software development company, which also manufactures supply chain solutions uh, for the manufacturing logistics, as well as uh, uh, retail, plus the uh, kiosk and the QR code based app, which will give a seamless usage of our hardware into multiple retail environment, transaction environment. Thanks, Vasco. That's yeah. you know, all the time we would have for today. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Quite insightful and I could relate a lot of the solutions <clears throat> already being used uh, for Domino's in terms yes. of contactless experience for clients and yes, yes. <clears throat> to you. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'll quickly move to our next presenter. I have one uh, question, but I think we'll have to take it offline. Okay. So I, I'll connect to you uh, with the question, Bhaskar, and you can okay, okay, try so to do. Thanks. So next one is coming up is uh, youngest of our lot today in the group. 
I am pleased to welcome Abhinav. Uh, Abhinav is founder and CEO at Perpule, and he was on Forbes 30 under 30 list in 2018. Graduate from NIT Suratkal. In 2015, worked for Goldman Sachs in US and India before starting his venture, Papule. <clears throat> Papule is one of the fastest growing retail tech e-commerce companies in India and is on a mission to build a commerce platform for India. So Perpule, Perpetual's uh, e-commerce plus solution helps retailers set up their e-commerce platform and get started with their e-commerce journey. It's currently being used by retail brands such as Starbucks, Shopper Stock More, Michal Megamart, Big Bazaar, Hypercity, Food Hall, Spar, Spencers, and many more. Uh, let's let please join me in welcoming Abhinav for his presentation. Over to you, Abhinav. Thanks, Sandeep. Thanks a lot for having me uh, here. Re really happy to be a part of such a vibrant uh, panel and and the audience. So thank thanks a lot for having me here. Uh, I have a quick presentation and I'll walk you all uh, through it, which talks about uh, what what we Perpule as a company has been doing in the last you can say three years since our inception. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that you would like me to answer. Just put them on the Q&A or on the chat and maybe after the presentation is hardly five, seven minutes. After that, I'll be happy to uh, kind of address the questions. So cool, I'll quickly start with our, with our journey. So we started towards the end of 2016 uh, and that's the time when there was a debate going on uh, 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 between the online and offline folks that uh, would the offline retail even exist or would the online guys kind of take over? And this is, you can say, early of 2016 when that debate was happening. We started although in end of 2016, but uh, we were very, very sure that the offline retail would exist. It's almost a 30-year-old uh, industry, contributes heavily to the uh, GDP of India, and, and even globally, if you see, like, is, is a very, very major part of, of retail, retail, and which is technically the backbone of any country. So we started with a mission to kind of transform uh, the offline retailers and really make sure that uh, they go ahead and improve their business. Uh, leverage technology and 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 uh, the other digitization aspects and upskill their business, bring it up to the speed and at the level at which uh, any other new e-commerce player who is starting out of nowhere now and they can kind of compete with with them in, with and have actually a larger edge because these are all much larger companies who have been operating for many many years. So that's a single point vision with which we uh, really started. I think it's been almost three and a half uh, years since inception. Uh, these are the bunch of clients. Uh, I mean, in India, as well as in our Southeast Asia and the Middle East market uh, that we work with, I think we've been very fortunate to work with the uh, leading modern retailers in the country who are literally category defining uh, companies. Like if you talk about Shop and Stop, they really started the whole culture of, of uh, how modern retail, how, how department stores would really go on to become somewhere in 1991. So I think we're very fortunate to have all of them as our, as our retail partners for, for the different products that we uh, host at, at Popular as a company. This is the, the talk of the town. Uh, you must have heard around in many other press releases, etc. cetera, uh, in the news as well. So I think our main focus as a company uh, right now is to enable uh, e-commerce for the retailers. Because if you talk about these retail brands, right, they've, they've been serving millions and millions of customers in a purely offline way. If you talk about, say, one of our uh, e-commerce customers, more Aditya Birla, uh, which was ex Aditya Birla, now owned by Amazon, uh, more mega store, one of the leading grocery retailers in India. They've been serving grocery in a purely offline fashion. They have never embraced e-commerce for the last 15 years. And now in a matter of say two weeks, they had to get ready and, and gear up for, for their e-commerce journeys. If you really try to map out the market, what you would understand is that all the retailers, again, this skewed towards uh, the grocery guys, their footfalls are at 60, 70%. If you go to fashion and electronics, their footfalls are at 10, 15, 20%. So if you take a average, no retailer, I mean, at, at an average, the retailers are having almost 40 to 50% of the footfall that they used to get. And can, that has a direct proportion to the overall revenue that they used to drive. So in tough times like these, it's very critical for retailers to kind of scale up uh, their e-commerce uh, businesses and start driving a good amount of revenue from there because I think the customer loyalty uh, really exists for these brands. And that's where we kind of come to completely automate and digitize the e-commerce storefront uh, enablement solution for all the leading retailers. And that's what is built into uh, our e-commerce plus solution. It is a very, very, you can say, comp uh, comprehensive solution. It has all the capabilities uh, that a, re a modern retailer today would need to set up their uh, e-commerce stores. It largely is built on top of a on top of a progressive web apps technology, which is the latest, you can say, web page, web rendering technologies available in the world, which makes sure that the dependence on internet uh, uh, is, is, is much lesser. And even on the flaky mobile data, you can have a very, very good uh, browsing experience because I think internet in India and in major parts of the world is still pretty flaky and, and weak. So we are kind of building it for the real 
Indian consumer, the Bharat consumer, which kind of comes from a tier two, tier five town uh, in India, because now all of them are really graduating very, very fast in in a in a, a situation where uh, they would go online and start shopping with the uh, with the kind of offline retailers who are now going online. So we have built the uh, product from that perspective now. And if you talk about these these retail brands, right? Again, probably I'll take the example of more for the sake of understanding, right? A more store today, uh, which is a thirty thousand square foot store, right? Does almost eight hundred to thousand transactions a day. On top of that, they do another two fifty three hundred transactions coming from the e commerce channel, right? And if you try to understand the uh, inventory levels of a of a say grocery retailer, right? They're, they're very dynamic. They're, they're changing every 15 minutes, which is there our capability to really integrate with the POS or the backend ERP of the store is, is very, very critical because we need to make sure that the fill rate, the final orders that come into the store and the uh, uh, the amount of items that out of it gets delivered should be very, very nine, uh, nice. And we're able to deliver almost 99% plus of fill rates with the right integration that we build with the POS and the ERP of, of these different brands. Then it has all the capabilities to handle large catalog. It's very easy to kind of build a, uh, you can say, uh, a food ordering app. But when you come to grocery, it's a very different ball game altogether because you're talking about 40, 50,000 uh, SKUs, which should be searchable, which should load beautifully, which should have images. So a lot of content creation and different capabilities of the platform uh, really come into picture uh, to kind of serve a, a beautiful storefront, which really resonates with the brand uh, that that the retailer really stands with. If you talk about shopper stop, right? It's all about fashion. If your website doesn't talk about uh, that type of you can say implementations and and the you can say assurance of fashion you're not doing justice to the brand so it's very critical to kind of build all of those pieces into the product and make sure that the customer experience whether it's online or it's offline is largely uh, same and and as close to as uh, possible in the off offline scenario so that's the perspective from which we are really kind of uh, looking at this and building this whole piece out we have a very interesting data layer on top of this whole uh, you can say uh, e-commerce platform and solution. I, I remember David also made a very interesting point on how critical data really is and all the more now. So this whole layer kind of captures every single interaction of the customer and, and generates very interesting analytics and insights for the retailers to go back and, and improve their other core systems, like the kind of catalog they show, the kind of inventories they keep. So our system is able to really tell them all of this in terms of how to improve so that they can drive higher throughputs and kind of, you can say, have better conversion rates. Because you try to understand, right? Uh, suppose if 100 customers come to a shopper stop store, almost around 60 uh, of them end up transacting. So the conversion rate for an offline scenario is, is 60%. But if you come online, it is as low as one and a half to 2%. So there's a lot of junk out there and, and primarily because uh, the touch and feel is not there. The kind of, you can say comparisons you can do, the kind of, uh, you can say, con conviction that you can build while you're shopping offline is much lesser. But I think this number will come up for sure. I will always be lesser than offline. There's no question to that. But I think it'll, it'll graduate and it'll come to a stage where uh, both of these solutions and both of these uh, stacks can coexist in a, a very critical uh, revenue stream for the retailer. So that's what we are really uh, focusing on. Uh, it has all the other capabilities uh, that any other e-commerce platform would need. Uh, in terms of really managing the entire, uh, you can say, recipe systems, integrating with the POS ERP, making sure the other orders, suppose any, anybody is selling on, on marketplaces like Amazon, Flipkart, Dunzo, uh, Swiggy, etc. So we have all those right, integrations in place to make sure that the same store inventory which the customer is listing with us uh, on, on their e-commerce platform uh, uh, gets listed or across all these different marketplaces and hyper-local players, if at all they want to leverage them uh, for the demand that, that these platforms can really drive. And I think the PWA point I already covered, it's built on cutting edge progressive web apps, which have a very, very good customer experience. And actually with data, we have seen almost the conversion rates with PWA and without PWA improved by almost a 40%, which is a very, very big number if you talk about a, a online implementation of any brand. This is a quick story uh, uh, about the digital transformation for more that we kind of pulled off in a really, really less time. I think uh, from the first call that I got from the uh, like the CXOs at, at more because they've been our customer before as well. So they know us very well uh, in a matter of the first call to probably 10 days, we got their platform up and running and they have done a phenomenal job in terms of how uh, they're serving their customers uh, online today. And it, I am very sure that it's almost gone to become eight, nine percent of the overall revenue that a store of, of more really drives and in, in a matter of three months. So I think hats off to them in terms of the uh, kind of penetration that they've been able to drive in, in almost no time. And I'm sure they will continue scaling e-commerce as a very, very critical revenue stream for them uh, down the line. This is the overall stack and, and we kind of built it from a very, very futuristic uh, perspective. So on the left, if you see, we have all the modules built into the product, which, which any retail store uh, really needs to operate, basically manage their catalog, the pricing, promotions of that. I mean, offline stores have amazing bunch of promotions. I think they're one of the only companies in India who kind of have the 
capability to implement promotions across all the most complicated uh, workflows and the scenarios available uh, with the different retailers in the country. All, all the other modules are all built into the product. We integrated seamlessly with the ERP, which can be a SAP or a or a or Oracle or any other equivalent of that. We integrate the loyalty program that the that the store really has the likes of Capillary and all the other folks, and we give a comprehensive product out to make sure that the uh, retailer can really do justice to their brand and to their uh, customers. Another very quick angle I'll, I'll love to cover here is, is I mean, if you see, right, Indian retailers particularly, and, and the same applies to the Southeast Asian customers as well as uh, Middle East customers that, that, that we work with, all of them are trying out e-commerce at this scale, at this, you can say, embracement for the first time, which is why it's very critical for everyone in the industry to kind of help and support them. And that from that angle, we came up with another product uh, called Mini Apps Plus. This is a co-creation between us and all the other uh, leading payments apps like Google Pay, Phone Pay, Paytm. Uh, so, I mean, what, what they did, uh, right, was they came to us and said, look, you have a lot of brands who you, whose e-commerce journeys you're enabling. Why don't you take those brands and put them inside uh, high traffic platforms like a Paytm, Phone Google Pay, which have like tens and fifteens of million uh, daily active users on, on their apps. And we kind of did that. We, we took the same e-commerce platform of a brand that we work with and put that inside a high traffic app like a Paytm, Phone Google Pay. And to a surprise, we actually uh, were amazed to see the results because, I mean, when 15 million users of, of Paytm kind of see a brand and the offering it has, it ends up into thousands of transactions. So that kind of uh, uh, happened as a new initiative and they are able to generate like a lot and lot of orders out, out of absolutely nowhere. So we're, we're doing our best along with all our other partners to make sure that the uh, retailers that we work with, the brands that we work with, uh, we are able to generate as much demand uh, for them as possible because it's, it's a tough time for everyone and we are trying our best to make sure that all of us can really sustain. Here's a quick example on what Man Company, which was our first customer on the mini apps platform, really did in a matter of uh, I think one and a half months probably 45 days right they were able to come to a, a stage where they were driving 500 orders a day of, of almost three four crores of monthly uh, sales just from the mini apps platform in, in a matter of, of four days that actually is almost nine percent of the entire revenue uh, that man company as a brand generates so I think that's the the impact of, of these partnerships that, that we have done and we are doing our best to make sure that we serve the retailers in the right spirit and, and make sure that all of them are able to build e-commerce is a very very uh, long-term, uh, you can say, solution for them to serve customers across. This is the other food yeah, board order. Time check. Uh, we're just running out of time, so if you could wrap up in the last one minute. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm largely done. This is the other food court ordering solution. What, what we're doing here is we're working with malls, uh, airports, duty-free retailers, and things like that, where, uh, again, uh, anybody can just browse the website or scan a QR code, get the menu of, of any particular uh, restaurant or a, or a or a pickup of a, of a food order that they want to do. So here we are working with people like Starbucks. We are enabling uh, drive-throughs for them. You can go to a Starbucks store. There's a QR code out there. You scan that and then you can digitally place an order. So all of those workflows are becoming all the more critical uh, now. And we're really focusing on all of them to make sure that, that we serve the customer in, in the best possible way. This is the uh, founding team uh, at Purple. I think totally we are around 150 plus guys working closely uh, in the different offices in India, South East Asia and Middle East to make sure that we serve the customers, the retailers across all these countries in the best possible way. That's all from my side. Happy to address Fine. questions. So, you know, so I have one question. Is endless IL a part of the solution? I believe it came up during the start of your presentation. Endless so, yes, yes it, it's a very, very critical uh, part of our product. And we've kind of tweaked it in a different way as well because earlier endless IL used to happen on the device of the, of the retailer. What we've understood now is if you kind of give the inputs to the system that, that we have built, you can send a link to the uh, phone of the customer and, and they can browse all the relevant products either on WhatsApp or on a, or a digital, you can say personalized web page because you are even, you can say, uh, suggesting retailers not to even exchange devices because I mean, uh, be it as contactless as possible. Uh, so in that agenda, you as a customer would get a message on WhatsApp with all the other uh, similar products uh, that, that you can really shop. So we're bringing endless aisles on, on WhatsApp is what we are really trying to do here for different brands that we work with. Okay, uh, with no more questions, uh, uh, thanks Abhinav for quite an insightful session and I could relate to a lot of things, particularly the QR code scanning, the food codes that we are also trying to look at doing and integrating with various partners, definitely. We connect with you offline to take the discussion forward. Thanks sure. a lot. Thanks, thanks Andeep, thanks everyone. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so the last presenter for the evening is Josefa Merchant. He is founder and CEO for InSync, InSync Shop Fittings by Safe Enterprises, a company dedicated to empowering the future of retail. Josefa has been a 
awarded top 100 retail minds by Asia Retail Congress in 2018, 2019, and 2020. And his innovation, the smart shop fitting solution, has been awarded by ET Now as most innovative retail solution and has been a recipient of multiple awards for design and innovation, both nationally and internationally. Josefa is a prominent voice for change in India's retail landscape. His vision to get uh, Indian innovation recognized on the global stage has been driving him to continuously break new grounds. I'm sure Josefa will share one secret, which uh, you know will uh, make us think differently about him. And uh, over to you, Josefa. Uh, looking forward for your presentation. <clears throat> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the new world, isn't it? It's a change that the world is changing so rapidly and so fast. The question is, are you ready? Before I go into my presentation, I think I'll, I'll honor Sandeep's request. So everything that you see today and every solution that you see today and what I'm gonna show you is designed by me and my team. It's done in India and it's done with the mission to empower India and take Indian innovation to the world. And that's my mission. So, <clears throat> and just since Sandeep asked for a secret, guys, um, I'm 95% blind and I hold quite a few design copyrights to my name. So that's my little secret. Um, I'm going to start with a short video. And after, after that, I wanted to take you guys through an experiential journey. And that's what I'm going to do, post which we can take some questions if time permits. So guys, we're trying to convert every store into a smart store or every shop into a smart shop. Imagine if each and every rack could give you tons of information, what people picked up, what they saw, what they liked, what they did not like, what they saw and bought, what they saw and did not buy, what combination of clothes they see. All of this today is possible with the technology that we've come up with. And this little journey is going to show you how that's possible today. Hey guys, this is Josefa Merchant, founder and CEO of InSync Shop Fittings, a company dedicated to empowering the future of retail by seamlessly integrating the excitement of physical stores with the efficiency of digital technology. Research shows that over 70% of time spent in store is at the rack. Yet traditionally, most racks could only display the product in a static or may I just say in a dumb way with over 5,000 hours of research and 15,000 hours plus put into development, we've created a smart shop fit. A shop fit that can integrate lighting, digital signages, as well as IoT 
to convert your shop into a smart shop. So let me take you through three such journeys that can help convert your shop into a smart shop today. This is shot at our display center in Mumbai and it is live for you to see touch and feel. So I'll see you at Mumbai soon. But till then, let's take a look and what we can do for you. Let me introduce you to the Fit and Light Smart Shop Fitting Solution. This is our inlaid version, which is inlaid into a wooden panel. It's a power track, which carries a 24 volt DC connection which can power up LED lights and our smart assistant. A digital signaging solution that can do much more. Let me introduce you to the magic of the smart assistant and its IoT capabilities. A research by PricewaterhouseCooper talks about product information being one of the top three things that make a retail journey more meaningful for the shoppers. So based on that knowledge, this is what we've created. You place the product on the shelf and you get product information. But that's not all. When you place two, you will get a comparison. The beauty of the solution is that the smart assistant can be moved anywhere around the rack where you put a power track. And our sensor kits that are embedded in the shelf can pick up information from tags that are embedded on the shelf. It's simple and easy to use and we can custom build applications around this triggering mechanism. And that application can be defined from your needs. The way this journey is designed is not to interrupt the customer's path to purchase. In fact, it's woven into the path to purchase. The smart assistant is integrated into the rack, so is the sensors. Any customer who goes to a rack is most likely to pick up a product. So what happens? They get information and there is no action taken by them to get the information. It's a proactive journey, which has the effect of shock or surprise. And research shows that Shock and surprise have a higher recall than simply looking at a product. And we've integrated this knowledge, this research into this journey, which is the pick and tell. So we realize that most retailers would love to get an opportunity to upsell or even cross sell their products. So let's see how the smart assistant can help you do that. So as soon as I pick up the product of the cradle, it not only shows the product information, but also shows what other products on this rack can go with the sandwich. Let's see what happens when I pick this one up. Same thing here. Yeah? It shows you the product information. Shows you what clothes or handbag would go well with this solution. What happens if I pick both of these up? Once again, we see a comparison. 
What happens if I change the position of these two shoes? Let's see. So this solution is wireless and position agnostic. third solution today uses a 32 inch touch panel it's a capacitive touch which can integrate your omni channel website into your rack i'll let my assistant demonstrate how you can use your own website in store to do a self checkout journey So not only can you use your own website in store, the question is why would you want to do it? So research shows that people want to see an extended range of products. They also sometimes want to pick something in the store but want to deliver at home. Connecting your web presence or your digital presence into your store gives you the advantage of pick in store get delivered home and other such techniques that have been become that have become extremely prevalent today like you can see the whole journey from looking at the products to checking out is possible right here at the rack so since we were all talking about contactless buying this is a little thing that we are working on right now for that forgive me for the quality because this was an internal demo but since there was contactless buying being spoken about and qr codes and blockchains thought this would be worth sharing. Zephyr, we're just running out of time. So I'm see. done. Yeah. I'm pretty much done. Okay. So, so uh, you want to say last words? Yeah, I do. Just give me a second. So guys, um, all the panelists here have spoken about how you can make your backend efficient, how you could make your operations efficient. All we are trying to do is take all the hard work that all these gentlemen have done and place it in a position where the customer can use it without really moving away from your products, your merchandise. Our mission is to bring digital capability and digital efficiency into the physical store, into the physical racks where people spend over 70% of their time. Make the lighting better by giving them shadowless uh, displays to look at and to help you convert your browsers into buyers and increase that 60% conversion rate into maybe 80%. That's all I have to say. Um, if there are any questions, I'd love to take them. And if time doesn't permit, then my number will be flashed on screen. You can always reach out to me offline and I'll answer any and every question that you have. Thank you so much for listening to me. And I hope this experience was worth it. Thanks, Josefa. Definitely. In fact, I went to a lot of events, but Something you presented today and you know, caught my attention. So definitely we'll connect with you. A lot of lot of uh, new things to learn from. Uh, so uh, question answers will take. Sure uh, yeah, question answers yes. will take offline. So I, I'll quickly present uh, contact information for all the presenters and then we'll jump into you know panel discussion. So we'll try to keep the panel discussion for ten minutes. We're running. We are running short of time. So just give me a second. I'll just. Uh, oh, it's there. It's been shared something. Okay, thanks.
So just wait for 10 seconds. You guys want to take a screenshot or something? Then we'll quickly jump into the panel discussion. Okay, so I now you know welcome all the panelists for a discussion uh, on on couple of points that you know we've thought through. So uh, I'll start with uh, you know David and I'll go through the table and uh, you know um, just try to ask you and I'll share my experience from so when the COVID thing started in India second week third week of March we'll suddenly ask to you know work from home. Uh, we have been planning it because we could see it coming and uh, you know. Then, you know, working from home remotely, we were asked to implement zero contact delivery, a lot of teams, digital, IT, supply chain, all need to work together, operations team, of course. And working remotely using MS Teams, we delivered a zero contact delivery. So we were very proud of it, how we worked remotely and still work, were able to work together to deliver an experience to the customer in the time of needs. Um, um, David, I'll start with you and go around the table with the same question. The sudden or gradual, whatever you may call, you know, call it, in, because it's happened in different part of world in a different way. So, what changed? I mean, I understand technology, supply chain solutions, all innovations, but when COVID onset, during the COVID onset, whether your customers, your own innovation team, what what really changed during this time where you saw an opportunity, you know, where you can go to the customers, your new customers, existing customers and offer even more great innovative solutions. What did really COVID trigger, which led your team to work uh, differently? Yeah, thank you, Sadeep. Um, yes, it uh, definitely forced us to adapt, that's for sure. Uh, but having said that, we, the world had a, a, a fear factor that after COVID, uh, the whole world is going to change uh, terribly and this and that. Actually, that was not, that's not what really happening. For example, where I am today now, life is back to normal. And uh, we are out like any other normal day. We still want to go to the store. We still want to buy. We still buy online. So we still want to go to a restaurant. It is really happening. So because any retail business, in my opinion, my personal opinion is this, it will survive so long as people are in the, on planet Earth. You know they have to eat, they have to dress, they have to have, they have to have, uh, you know, all their needs met, and the market has to offer. The only thing is, the retailer has to adapt to 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 modern business formats so that he can run it profitably, efficiently, without compromising the shopping experience or customer satisfaction. This is what uh, my feeling. That's what that's the way we are working at the moment. Thanks, David. And 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 one fact I mentioned to forgot, David is presently in Vancouver, so it's almost early morning there, and he has been sitting with us for the last one half hour. So thanks, David, for that. <laughs> that's fine. Okay, over to you, Bhaskar. What's your view on that? You know, how how did COVID trigger the changes uh, in your organization, and you know, how do you think you were able to help retailers even more in these times? Uh, so, uh, let me also tell a little secret that last 100 days I'm not in Bangalore. <laughs> I'm in my hometown village. Okay, so it's, it's uh, I have come out of my village place on the request of Bindu to have a better connectivity. Okay. That's good. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Vaskar. Thanks to bring me out of that <laughs> heaven that where I'm staying for the last 100 days. Okay, so I, I pretty much agree with uh, David. Uh, uh, the village that I stay, the Taluk uh, city, I come here to the Taluk, the place called Erode. Uh, after the uh, lockdown relaxation, the life is very normal over here. Uh, the case has become zero. There was no reported positive case. And if you see the last uh, one month, the cases started increasing. Okay, and people cannot just resist at home. You have to go, you cannot stop APMCR. You cannot have agricultural produce. You have to go to the market. The people have to venture out, okay? And we have to live with the corona. So that's one thing. But however, the retail is not just only about organized retailing. The retail is about organized and unorganized mama, papa shop. Everybody has to has to coexist, has to, has to find a ways to coexist in this situation. And even uh, when I interact with a couple of uh, small shops over here, they are also ready to implement a possible way of, of digital solution with them. If they said, I have opened a retail recently a supermarket, 
uh, uh, he has invested he said i can't survive with this current turnover if there is a solution which i can take an order by mobile app where the customer can place i will go and deliver a contactless delivery like sandeep your contactless delivery he is taking you he said an example of uh, dominos pizza so can i go and deliver to them so that they don't come it is a small village okay so that supermarket is guys thinking about this which means that there is a sense of uh, technology adoption into the uh, small and medium level retailers which was not the case last year when i speak okay and 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 what i what i think is the affordability of this technology okay where this guy if he says 1 lakh of setup cost implementation cost is that going to happen and he says zero setup cost and just pay as per use something like that which comes up the technology is affordable to the retailer is definitely go a long way so that, that even within the last one month uh, our uh, cure based and cure uh, kiosk based solution we we have signed up more than 100 customers and we are very happy to see that during this period the people transformed and adapted this fast and i think this when we open up to other cities it will also go bigger so i i pretty much agree that life will coexist with the uh, pandemic and the yeah. technology will be a, a part of every small retailer also all right thanks vaskar abhinav uh, what's your thoughts on this i i think very much in tandem with david and david and vaskar i think life would exist i'll maybe uh, add on my two cents on that uh life would for, for sure continue but i think uh, how we interact the things we do are, are fast changing uh, like like never before so when we started perfule we actually were projecting that by 2025 is when uh, offline stores would go on to become a significant contributor to e-commerce because if you talk about e-commerce today in india it's like roughly 30 35 billion uh, dollars of the that's the overall e-commerce market very small uh, as compared to all the other global markets and out of the 35 billion dollars like under 1 billion dollar is contributed by modern retail so that is like almost 3% that that's it it's a very very small uh, contribution of of modern retailers the offline stores or, or to to e-commerce it's largely dominated by marketplaces our projection was uh, by 2025 when the overall growth uh, and the economy really takes a upward tick is when uh, offline retailers would go on to contribute a lot more but i think to our surprise uh, what what we have seen this black swan event of this size has completely changed it whatever we were projecting 2025 onwards of 2025 to happen is already happening now it's a phenomenal pace every single retailer is trying to uh, get online get digital embrace technology like like never before i think very happy about oh, i mean how the retailers have have come across because if you see they are actually the most hit it's really hard to be a retailer today we totally understand that which is why we are going out of our way to make sure uh, we do the best to really help them uh, sustain their business and eventually uh, ensure that the customers also get uh, a good user experience so i think uh, the overall uh, optimism is there in the industry i think you can make it out from the panel between all of us as well i think we are very optimistic of what's coming i think that's a good place to be at i think that's how we should really take a thing like this because i think we are uh, there are enough negative thoughts out there adding more uh, won't really help so i think that's how we are looking at it let's really pick out the positives as much as possible and kind of capitalize on them and make sure that or uh, they are in everyone's interest yeah i completely agree what would have taken couple of years for retailers to adopt this event four step to relook and you know i think it was fast at at least 3x if not more yeah definitely agree uh, zefa how do you see this was considering all your you know design and you know experiences are in store offerings so how do you you know see uh, this covid triggering any kind of thought process change or you know redesigning the experiences for the customers So I think uh, Abhinav had a brilliant point that COVID actually acted like a super highway for technology adoption. Uh, today conversations have gone into how do you do so? Like I just showed you one one example of the the QR code buying bit. This came out of somebody's need to want to want to go on uh, contactless buying. and we serving multiple markets and we seeing the retailers there are a set who's not optimistic who talking about cost cutting the others are thinking about how they can use this this downtime to bring the next level of retail in but i i really don't see consumer mindset changing too much beyond uh the few months or even a year if if covid stays consumer mindset is going to come back but one technology one style of retailing that i feel is going to really pop up is going to be pop ups 
I was just talking to a friend of mine, a retailer, a couple of days back, saying, why don't we take your stores and pop them up into places where people go today, which is workspaces, right? So any um, organized uh, office building setup, say like in, in Mumbai, it would be India Bulls and Delhi, DLF, whatever, the number of them, right? What if we can take and put up a store there? With the technology that we have, we can create those pop-ups. We can actually have people scan QR codes, buy the material from your website, and you can get them delivered home. So instead of the, the, these pop-ups being really, let's sell it right now, they become like showcases where people can touch and feel and buy it from there, but you deliver it home. So the inventory is really not being managed as such. It's just going from your e-commerce inventory pile because we're connecting it through QR back to your e-commerce store. And because all of this is part of a, a pop-up setup, where the product can also be displayed. People can touch and feel it. It's a fantastic hybrid omni-channel model for this time. And I think the, the retailer seems quite optimistic. They want to look at this model. Yeah. And we're working with certain retailers in the US now to, to try to figure out how this can be adopted for them as well. Yeah, great, thanks. So uh, that's all the time we would have. Uh, I would have loved to carry on this discussion. I've learned a lot of things in the past 90 minutes. It's lovely interacting with all the wonderful audiences with their question and answers. It's always, you know, new learnings for all of us being sold old in the industry, but still, you know, it's always good to learn. So uh, I would like to thank all the panelists for taking out time, you know, present in different parts of India and globe as well, and still uh, being able to come on the platform and share our experiences. I would like to thank uh, MEPIC and RF India and all the you know coordinators for the show uh, bindu in particular bindu thanks for having me on the show it's it's wonderful experience and would love to come back for more so over to you bindu sure well great thank you speakers for sharing your solutions to the industry i'm sure this will be very helpful for all the retailers thank you all the attendees we really appreciate you being here uh, if you have any questions please do write in to us and um, we'll be happy to share it with our speakers and they will get back to as soon as possible. Well, uh, thank you once again. Uh, Pritam, can you please share the contact? Yeah, thank you so much. That's